Parliament yesterday rejected the government request to approve a supplementary budget worth 12 billion shillings. Parliament directed that the money be taken back to the consolidated fund until proper procedures are adhered to. It is claimed that the government had acquired the money without the approval of Parliament and were seeking approval retrospectively. The Attorney General, Peter Nyombi, looked exhausted as he moved with his technical team asking the Parliamentary Committee on Legal Affairs to bail him out. The best way <laughs> is for us to talk and then see the best way of going around this problem. However, Nyombi was not ready to divulge details of the agreements claiming the use of confidentiality clauses. As Attorney General, I should be the last person to bridge what was agreed upon. However, MPs insist that the law allows them to disclose the details of the agreements. That, 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 that's none of our business. We want to look at them unless we are not members of parliament. The law is very clear that the parliament, the committee of parliament has the powers of the high court. He has no choice but to produce all of them. If he withholds some, then the committee should be able to take some other decision. We must be satisfied that one, the money is going to be used for purpose and that we have value for money. We cannot reach that conclusion without looking at the documents. Nyomi demanded to hold the committee proceedings in camera, but the lawmakers rejected his plea, saying oil matters are no longer secrets for Ugandans to know. We want the public to know the minutest detail of what transpired. Really, the issue of oil in this country has been a secret for a long time. Nyombi and his team were thrown out of the committee until they produced documents and agreements signed between the government of Uganda and the UK-based legal firm Caltes Maltes Prevost. Jingo Francis, NTV Parliament.